So now we have seen how you can use the sample point in a classical CAN and with the CAN FT format. And now we're going to switch over to the bitrate switch mode in the CAN FT. So we go here and switch to enable the bitrate switch for the frame. So, and now we see that the frame comes here at 246 ID with the FD and bitrate switch, and 247 also with the bitrate switch. And then we go into the frame view here and start to get some frames. And there we have a frame. And you see all the bits here. And here you can see that you have the arbitration bits in the beginning. And with the bitrate switch, we swing to a higher bitrate all the way through to, to the CRC delimiter, where we switch back to the um, arbitration bit again. So if you go in here and look to the bits, see the difference? compared to the what you have done before. Here we see the starter frame bit, looks perfectly fine. We have the recessive edge a little bit delayed, but it may match fine there. And if you go all the way down to the ACK bit, uh, we will see the same here, that uh, the, the ACK bit dominant edge here is a little bit delayed into the ACK bit uh, due to the delay in, in the ACKing unit. So let's go and see how the bitrate switch actually is done. So. Uh, here we have the FDF bit, which is recessive, uh, and then you have the uh, reserved bit, and you see here, here you do, uh, the can have to make a hard sync. So this edge here is, is synchronized uh, to the sample point correctly. So even if there was a phase shift offset here, it will be uh, adjusted to the bitrate. And the bitrate switch comes after the reserved bit, and as you see here, this bit is a little bit different in the end after the sample point because in the B BRS bit, this uh, uh, TSEG2 here, which is uh, uh, from this is the TSEG2 from uh, the arbitration bit, but in BRS bit, the TSEG2 comes from uh, the, the data bit. <coughs> so the TSEG1 is from arbitration and TSEG2 is from the data bit. And uh, here starts the first. Uh, uh, data bit. And as you can see here, the, the, delay, the delay of the recessive edge here uh, becomes a bigger part uh, in the bit compared to the uh, arbitration bit because the data bits are just smaller. So, uh, but the, the, this uh, recessive edge led, uh, delay is, is constant and it doesn't uh, depend on the length of the bit. So this is, all looks fine and uh, well, we have no error frames and the communication work. And if you look at the other frame, it will be looking the same. So let's see what we can do when we change the bitrate. So we go out here and change the receiver here to have uh, uh, not 99%. We go only here to 85%. So we move the uh, edge uh, from 75% to uh, 85%. Keep the data rate. Go to the, there, restart, so we get new fresh frames with a new setting. And if you look here, everything looks the same. The starter frame here comes the same, and the, you see now the sample point I'm a little bit 10% uh, further, 8 to 85 instead of 75%. Doesn't matter because we're still in the bit, there is no error frames. And uh, the ACK bit actually goes better because uh, the sample point gets to the center. So it doesn't matter, you have this. Uh, uh, delay of, of the of the edge here in, in between the ascending node and the uh, act bit node. But then go to the BRS bit here. Uh, expand a little bit, and now you can see here uh, that the the sample point is is here. So it's very very close uh, to the error status bit uh, indicating. And you can see here actually the grow, gray area high end means that the, the data bit try to to do a sync of width here. Now we have only sync of width one, so we only have removed one time quanta. But anyhow uh, it's, it's dangerous close here. And if we go see down here in the list of can frame we see there are error frames. So let's go in here and look at the BRS bit. And here you can see, uh, hard to see, but the sample point is actually, so the BRS sample point here is done in the error status indicator. And that means that the, the receiving cam controller here 
thinks that th this is uh, not a bitrate switch. So it thinks that there should be a, a, a new error status bit should end here, but actually it, it ends uh, here. So now we have a problem, uh, because sooner or later, uh, when we start to sampling here arbitration bit, uh, you, you will get a, an, an error. And uh, here, here it should be a stuff bit and doesn't show up as a stuff bit, so you get an, an error frame here. So you will get different errors. So what we learn from this is that uh, in, in, without bitrate switch, uh, uh, we, we could uh, increase the bit, uh, the, move the sample point from 75% uh, to 99% without any problem, if we have good oscillators. But if we switch to bitrate switch, uh, the shape of the BRS bit uh, affected by the move of the sample point will, will uh, limit the, the change from 75% uh, up to the maximum 85%. And it, this is when you have perfect oscillators. If you have bad oscillators and disturbance on the edges, uh, you, you can uh, be less than 85%, maybe 80, or maybe even you have to stick to the exactly num exact numbers in the center, the, that in this case, 75%. So let's see how it looks in the other end. Uh, so we go in here, and in this case, I'm not going to change, uh, switch to 15%, I stick with 62% for some reason. And then we go in here and restart recording. And as you can see here, we get a little bit more uh, error frames. So, so there, uh, we have even more problem here uh, than we had uh, in, in um, the previous when we had 85%. So let's start to look at, at the, here it looks fine, but now you see the sample point comes early. In our arbitration part, this is, is, is not a problem. Uh, but if you look at the BRS bit here, the FDF bit fine, we get a hard sync here, everything is perfect. But if you look here at the BRS bit, now it's a sample point in here. So in the sender, in a receiver, excuse me, uh, it, it believes that uh, the BRS bit ends here. And this is the error status indicator bit. This works because it samples over here, so actually it sampled that this correctly. Uh, but if you, you look close here, you will see that the, the, when the next sample, which is uh, the DLC number 3, is, is sampled, it actually hits the error status, which is dominant. Uh, and uh, actually in the next bit as well, here, is dominant. So. Uh, the, actually, the, the receiver here doesn't consider this as, as a bit at all, because it, it thinks there's a dominant, dominant, dom, and dominant bit, and expects a stuff bit over here, which it will not see, and uh, that will cause an error. So, uh, what we learn from this is that uh, when you go to uh, bit, can have with bitrate switch, uh, instead of, of have the wide range from 15% to 99% of uh, the possible sample points, you are limited in, uh, to be in the range 62, 63, up to a, a maximum 85%. And again, that is with perfect oscillators. If you had any uh, um, oscillators that is more than a couple of hundred ppm, uh, you have to re reduce this uh, spread in, in the sample point to, to uh, less than 85 and above the 62. And of course, the, the best solution is to in 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 Canafte is to use the same sample point in uh, all uh, units uh, connected to the Canafte bus with uh, when you use the bitrate switch uh, in the CAN communication. So that's all uh, we learn uh, about KenFT. So, so if you want to say, say that again, if you want uh, KenFT work good, make sure that you have the, the correct and exact SAM setting in all units on the bus.